Hi, this is Charlie Calvert, and I'm going to show uh, doing a little Android development with the Android um, SDK. We're running inside of Eclipse here, and we're going to show how to switch between activities <coughs> when using an intent. So, for the overall goal is to be able to have a single Android application which will switch between two screens. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started here. We're going to choose new Android project and we'll call this Switch Video 01 in case we need to build more than one of them. And then we'll come over here. We're going to choose target the Android 4.03 SDK. We're going to place this in com.elvenware, which is the name of a website associated with me, and we'll call this Switch Video 01 is the package name or namespace that it's placed inside the package name. And let's go ahead and target a min SDK of 2.33 so that we can also run on older versions of the Android SDK if we so choose um, of the Android. Uh, operating system if we so choose. So we've gone ahead and we've started this project now. Um, I'm going to close this older version of the product project that I had. And now we've got this thing started. And if we come in here, we can see that we have some source code here. Um, often by default, if you don't have automatic builds turned on, um, you'll get a little red squiggly under R. And you can just go up to your project menu and choose Build All. Notice that in my project menu, I have build automatically turned off. It's just a question of taste. You can leave it turned on if you like. Then um, I want to have a virtual machine running. So I'll go up here and bring up um, VirtualBox. And I'm going to start up a copy of um, the Android operating system running inside a VirtualBox so that I have a uh, machine to target here. And is, here is Android loading. I prefer to use Android running inside of Android x86 project running inside of uh, VirtualBox to using the uh, virtual machines that uh, ship with the product. So now here we are inside of Android running inside a virtual machine. And I'm going to press Alt F1, and it takes me to the command prompt. And I can go net. CFG and I see the IP address of my machine which is 192.168.0.116 okay then I can just press alt F7 and um, I go back to my GUI here uh, the next step would be to connect the debugger to this instance of Android so I go to the command prompt over here, and I think we said it was 116. Uh, I made a typo here. And I type ADB connect 192.168.0.116, and now I'm connected. Um, so we'll be able to run our Android applications inside this virtual machine and uh, debug them from inside of uh, Eclipse, which is where we're doing our development. So if we're going to switch from one activity to another activity, uh, one of the first things we're going to want to do is to have a second activity. See, right now we only have one activity, and it's the default activity. And if we went and ran this application, it would appear um, we can run this as an Android application. The first time we run, we get prompted for that dialog. And then, as you can see, here it is running inside the Android virtual machine. I just alt-tabbed over to it. OK. So let's have a second screen that we can display. To do this, I'm going to right-click on the package. There's many different ways to do what I'm about to do. And I'm going to say, let's create a new class. And I'll call this class. Um, <coughs> screen 2 and I'll decide what the superclass is that I want it to descend from 
and I want it to descend from the activity. I want it to be an activity, so I'll choose Android Activity, and now you can see it descends from Android Activity over here. Okay. Um, now, default, by default, it has no onCreate method. We can go ahead and add that by, um, say, typing in O, N, and then C, just a few unique letters. Let's add a few more. Now here it can gets me to an on create and I can just press enter and now it's at least created my on create method for me automatically using the tools, the Android SDK tools that are built into um, Eclipse. And now the next step would is going to want to be <coughs> to associate this with a layout. Of course by default we have no layout for this particular environment. So let's go for this particular application. So let's go over here to our layout. Here's our main layout that um, you already saw being displayed inside of Android. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to choose um, to create a new. Notice I've gone to the layout folder in the res section. So I've gone to my resources associated with this project, gone to the layout folder, and now I'm going to add an Android XML file. And because I'm working inside the layout folder, it knew that I was um, wanted a layout rather than, say, a menu or something like that. And we'll call this the uh, screen 2. Okay. So that will be the name of the XML file that we're about to create. And now we can go, um, all we need to do here is imitate this on create method as closely as we can okay so we'll come back over here we'll do a save it's often nice to make sure everything builds so do a control B to um, con to build everything and then when you do that you might even want to check in your gen folder to look at r.java and mo make sure that it has a reference to screen 2 this is the um, XML file we just created and it ends up here in the layout section of um, r.java. So we do in fact have that available to us and so we can come over here and say set oops set content view and pass in um, r.layout dot screen two, correct? Um, now you want to in that phase always make sure that up here in your imports you never ended up with an import r android dot r dot java if it did just delete that import and then you'll find that you can get back into uh, the flow of things down here with finding a resource like this. So now we have um, two layouts here one associated with screen two, one associated with our main screen. And <clears throat> uh, we want to make sure that the application knows about the fact that we've added a second resource in here. So let's bring up our manifest file. And again, there are many different ways to do what I'm doing right now, some of which might be a little more convenient for some people, but um, I feel that this technique help you understand what's going on the best. So looking at this GUI view of our um, manifest, here's the manifest itself, and we could just edit it by hand to make the changes we're about to make, but instead why don't we let the GUI do it for us. We'll go over to the application tab, which is one of the views you can have, and you can see our switch video activity is already visible. And let's add a new one, and we'll make it an activity. and um, let's browse for the activity and it takes a second but if you browse you can see that screen 2 is visible the class that we created screen 2 that activity is visible and then you want to put a little dot in front of it and then just press control s to save and now you see we have two activities here if we go look at the XML we can see um, here's the name and the name of our first activity, the default one, is Switch Video 1 activity. And you can see that it's the main one. Its action is main, and it's also registered to be shown um, 
in the menu system inside of um, the Android operating system. And then down here we have our new activity down here. If you see, uh, that one's been added, screen 2. So at this point, everything's registered with the system, which is a big step. But we don't have um, any way to switch from one screen to the other screen. We have both screens. We have both activities visible. Um, but we need to have some mechanism, either a menu or a button, to let us switch between the two. Um, buttons are so simple to use. Why don't we do them in this case and then uh, leave the complexity of menus for some other video. So I'm going to switch uh, over to one of my XML files. So we're on the screen 2 uh, layout. And let's just drag a button onto it. And then let's also do the same thing for our main layout. Let's just drag a button onto it. So then we'll use these buttons to switch from one screen and then back to the other screen. And <clears throat> I'm going to come over here now to look at the uh, XML that was generated when I dropped the button down here. And you can see uh, what's been generated here. And let's add one more item to it. And again, there's several different ways to accomplish what we both going to what we want to do now, which is to allow us to call a method. And I am going to define an on click method that will be associated with this button. And I'm going to call it on go to screen two. Okay, so that's going to be the name of a method defined inside the activity associated with main.xml. So that activity is called switch video activity. And what we can do is simply copy this name so we make sure we have it exactly right. And we go public void. And then this, these methods that get called when a button gets clicked on get past a view. And now you can see by default, view has not been added to our import statements. So we hover the mouse over it, and we say import view. And now you can see that view has been imported into here. So what we want to do next is to write an intent that will launch the second screen. Okay, So let's declare the intent. And and what it wants as parameters are the view dot get context. Okay, and then the other thing that it would like at this stage would be to know what view you actually want to show. Now look, intent hasn't been imported yet, so run the mouse under it, and now import the intent. And now you can see Android content intent has been added to our imports list. And over here we wanted to bring in this screen 2, right, which was the name of our other class. So that our intent is to launch screen two, and that's the way we say that. And then down here, we say this dot start activity, which is pretty self-explanatory, saying we want to start this activity. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this application. And now you can see that it has been launched inside of uh, the Android Virtual Machine here. And you can see we're Hello World Switch Video 1 activity. So we're on screen 1. I press the button. And now we're Switch Video 01. We've switched over to the other screen that we created, um, which also has a button on it. So um, that's really the way you do it. We haven't hooked up the second button, but obviously you just repeat the steps we did just then in order to switch back to the first screen. 
I think that's really enough. It's best to keep these videos short. That explains to you how to launch one activity from another um, activity. The key thing here was, was writing our click and creating our intent. And intents are how we start the various components associated with an Android application. And in this case, we had added a component, a new activity, and we launched it. So my name is Charlie Calvert. Um, thank you. If you head over to the uh, Elvenware Android um, section, you would uh, be able to download a copy of the source to this application from the page on, um, why don't I put it on the Android Activities page. All right, so www.elvenware.com slash Charlie and then navigate to the Android section in the Android Activities page. Thank you very much. Bye now.